acknowledgement of a miracle involving a multiplication of water in the baptism of Font Enipepe, Mozambique, attributed to the intercession of a sister Erin Stephanie Nyada on the 12th of June 2014, paved the way for the promulgation of a beatification decree by Pope Francis. And after beatification on the 23rd of May 2015, it was clear to all and sundry that Blessed Stephanie was only a single step closer to sainthood. Father Peter Githenji of the Roman Catholic Diocese of Nyeri is a postulator engaging Pope Francis on the processes that will lead to her canonization. Father Githenji reveals that at least two miracles attributed to Blessed Irene Stephanie's intercession have to be verified by the Vatican. So many miracles have been reported up to now. They, but you know, they, they are not simple matters of uh, you know, healing a simple disease like homa or malaria. We are talking of a life-threatening situation. You know, what we used to call a long time ago, uh, terminal illnesses. The examination of miracles is no doubt a lengthy, elaborate process, but whose findings are eagerly awaited. This uh, healing, you know, must happen instantly, not a process. You know, you heal in a, a process. A miracle must happen at once, instantly. And it, has be proved, it must be proved by medics and by, you know, scientists and a commission of the church, theological and uh, historical commission, to prove that it is beyond any reasonable doubt that God has shown a sign that Blessed Irene has reached the final stage. Oh. A consulate missionary sister born Aurelia Masidi Stefani on the 22nd of August 1981 in a small village called Anfo in Italy, Blessed Irene Stephanie came to Kenya in 1915 to help those injured in the World War I. It is at the sleepy village of Gikondi in Mukurene, sub-county, Nyeri County, where she earned the name Nyada for her mercy and love. It is also where she lived and worked from 1920 until her death on the 31st of October 1930, following a short illness. To honor her, a shrine is under construction in Gikondi. The simple architectural design provides for not only a place of worship, but a historical site. Uh, they come to pray through her intercession. So it's a place where you come to pray and you see things that were associated with the person with, with God now in heaven. And the spirit goes up higher. On the ground floor is a holding area for pilgrims complete with a confessional. Adjusting to it, a room to be used by a resident priest who will guide pilgrims. Downstairs, a nut gallery takes pride of place, showcasing personal items and other artifacts, telling the story of Blessed Irene Stephanie Nyada's life, including remains of a house she's believed to have lived in. Now, this is what used to be the permanent residence of Blessed Sister Irene Nyada when she was serving in Gikondi. And above it is a huge and massive structure that has been built by the Catholic Church, where pilgrims will be pouring to come and pray in the name of Blessed Sister Irene Nyada, who is only a step away from sainthood. And of course, this area will serve as the art gallery where pilgrims will also come and be able to actually look at the life of Sister Irene Nyada. And as you can see down here, uh, this is soil and almost eaten up to the full brim after pilgrims coming here really and having to carry soil as relics. Interestingly, the much-awaited sainthood of Blessed Irene Stephanie Nyada will not be the only light illuminating the Roman Catholic Diocese of Nyeri, as the Vatican is said to recognize about 80 missionaries who died while spreading the gospel in the region. These are people who had grown in faith, and we are very lucky, especially us who are doing the research of Blessed Irene for the final stage of sainthood, because you realize most of these candidates were catechists and teachers who, in one way, worked or were associated with the Blessed Irene. On one hand, it is good news for the sea. On the other hand, the Mau Mau Veterans Association is casting shadows on the move, arguing the missionaries frustrated the clamor for Kenya's independence. We have candidates. These are people who were killed during the, the colonial period, between 1952 and 1958. Uh, they were killed because of hatred of faith, not because that they were anti, you know, co the, the colonial people, Oh, Mau Mau, Mau Mau. That aside, another issue threatens to overshadow the highly anticipated announcement from Rome. Still, nothing, it appears, will take away the joy of locals. They are content with the knowledge that the previously little-known village of Gikondi 
could in the future gain more fame if blessed Iron Stephanie Nyada is declared a saint. John Jacob Curia for Channel One. Thank you.